Hey guys, what's up? So about two weeks ago, I reviewed the M4 Mac mini and I called it the best value computer available today. And I stand by that. For 600 bucks, it's an absolute beast and it's a total no brainer for most people really. But I was so impressed by it that it got me really curious about its bigger brother, the M4 Pro Mac mini. I mean, if we can get that much power out of an entry level machine, how much can we actually squeeze out of the top end model? And that got me thinking, could this M4 Pro Mac mini possibly replace my insanely expensive spec'd out M3 Max MacBook Pro at about one third of the price? Let's ramble. Hold up, things go well when I pull up. They all on me like it wants. So yeah, I went ahead and ordered the top end model of the M4 Pro Mac mini, meaning the 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU and 16 core neural engine. I bumped up the RAM as far as I could to 64 gigabytes and I opted for the 10 gigabit ethernet port, which is a relatively small extra expense, but so worth it. And you'll see why later on in the video. The only thing I didn't max out this time is the storage. I stuck to two terabytes and I have a very specific reason for that. That has something to do with the Thunderbolt 5 ports on this thing. Because unlike the base model M4 that comes with Thunderbolt 4 ports, the M4 Pro model features three Thunderbolt 5 ports that are up to three times as fast at 120 gigabits per second, and that opens up some really interesting options. And that brings the grand total of this configuration to $2,899, which is about a third of what I paid for my fully maxed out M3 Max MacBook Pro. Now, because the M4 Pro Mac Mini is supposed to be such a little beast, and people have pointed out that it actually actually beats the old Mac Pro in many ways, I got my friend Dennis to 3D print me a case for the Mac Mini that makes it look like a miniature Mac Pro, and I can't thank him enough for suggesting it because I think this thing looks super dope. Unfortunately, we can't take credit for the design, which comes from a designer on Maker World. I will put a link to that in the description below the video in case you're interested in printing one for yourself. I wanted to make it silver to stay close to the original, but people have been sharing all kinds of variations and there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Anyway, I had to create a separate desk setup for testing the Mini Pro, so I decided to set it up right next to my main workspace, which is powered by the M3 Max MacBook Pro, so I can run my tests on the Mini Pro and my MacBook Pro at the same time, which makes it a lot easier to compare the two. This second desk has been serving as my iMac review desk, if you will, so I had to clear that out first. Now, since some of you guys have been asking me in the comment section of the base model review, which monitor and peripherals I would recommend, I decided to start this setup from scratch and get exactly those peripherals I would choose. And I've been so satisfied with my dual Mac Studio setup at my main desk that I really didn't need to consider another monitor for this new Mac mini setup. I love the studio display. There are for sure better monitors out there for less money, but as with most things Apple, it just works so well within the Apple ecosystem that I don't see any reason to consider something else. Now, since we're starting from scratch here, I thought this could be a good opportunity to invest in the USB-C version of the Apple Magic Keyboard and the Magic Trackpad as well. What you won't find on my desk is the Apple Magic Mouse because let's be honest, that thing really sucks. My weapon of choice has been and still is the MX Master 3S, hands down the best productivity mouse out there. This extra large desk stand from Grovemade ties it all together very nicely, and even the little Mac mini tower looks like it belongs on it. Now, obviously, I didn't just buy all of this stuff for this review. I actually have plans for this stuff because even if it turns out that the M4 Pro Mac mini can and will replace my M3 Max MacBook Pro and will therefore move to my main desk, I have a very specific setup in mind for the base model Mac mini that involves all of those peripherals and more. And if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to find out what I've got cooking, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. It would be great to have you along for the ride. Now guys, I'm not gonna run any synthetic benchmarks here. There's plenty of channels out there doing it and that would probably do a much better job anyway. I'm no IT specialist. I'm an end user just like you guys. And the things I wanna test are things that I actually use and need in my daily life. Of course, my use cases aren't necessarily yours, but the results of my test should give a clear picture of whether this machine would work for you as well. But before we get started, a quick shout out to our channel partner, Ugreen, for sponsoring today's video. I wanna show you guys one of my favorite products from their new Uno series. This 10,000 milliamp hour, 30 watt power bank with built-in USB-C cable, so you'll never find yourself searching for a cable to charge your stuff again. What I like about the entire Uno series is that it has this laid back and fun vibe, making their chargers look and act like little robots. 
Instead of boring power banks with some indicator lights that only give you a rough indication of how much juice is left, this one actually shows you the exact battery percentage, which I find way more useful. When it's idle, this little robot will use its face emojis to tell you what's up, it will show you a happy face to let you know it's charging your device and a sad face when the battery on the power bank is low. When both eyes turn into heart emojis, you will know the battery bank is fully charged. The charger actually offers 30 watts, two-way fast charging, charges my iPhone 16 Pro Max from zero to 60% in about 30 minutes, and with its massive 10,000 milliamp battery, it still has plenty of juice left. On top of the built-in charging cable, this power bank has two more charging options on top, one USB-A and one USB-C, making this a very versatile little charger that can easily charge several devices at once, like my iPhone and my AirPods, for instance. Now, this Uno lineup doesn't only have power banks, including magnetic wireless Qi 2 versions, but also chargers, hubs, and cables. They are fast and fun accessories for your iPhones, your iPads, and a whole bunch of other devices you might use on the daily. If you wanna check them out for yourself, there's a link in the description below. Now, the first thing I wanted to test is the 10 gigabit ethernet port. We recently got this blazing fast fiber connection here in the office, which can run internet speeds of up to 8.5 gigabits per second. But to make full use of that on my MacBook, I had to invest in a USB-C to 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. And while that works as advertised, it runs hot. I mean, really hot, so hot that it worries me a little bit. So I'm super stoked that this Pro Mac mini has a 10 gigabit ethernet port built in and as as you can see, it delivers. The speeds are amazing, and I'm happy to report that it does not get hot, not even a little bit, even after a full day of use. This is such a relief and well worth the extra 100 bucks to me. Now, since we're running speed tests, we might as well do a quick comparison between the internal SSD on the M3 Max MacBook Pro and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Let's check the Mini first. As you can see, these internal SSDs really are super fast. Unfortunately, expanding the storage on these things is also extremely expensive, but we'll get to that and a potential solution in just a second. Now, if we run the same test on the M3 Max MacBook Pro, you'll see that the read speeds are roughly the same, but in write speeds, it beats the M4 Pro Mac Mini by a significant margin. Will you notice the difference in everyday use? Probably not, but it's good to know for those to whom it matters. What does matter to a lot of users is RAM usage under heavy load. A lot of us still prefer Google Chrome over Safari, but we also know that Chrome is an absolute RAM hog, especially when you have multiple tabs open. So what I wanna do here is open 40 tabs on each machine. I'm pretty confident that's more than most people will have open. And we'll do that while using a monitor tool and see how they do. To make it all a little bit more challenging, all 40 tabs will be running a YouTube video. Starting off with a Mac mini, you can see it is handling it just fine. Now, if we run the same test on my MacBook Pro setup, it is handling it very well, as expected, and a little better than the Mac mini, but considering that this one has 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is twice as much as the maxed out RAM on the M4 Pro Mac mini, the difference really isn't as big as I would have expected. Both machines have absolutely zero problems. Now, before we move on to the fun stuff, there is one test that matters a great deal to me personally, and that is how well these machines run my video editing software. In my case, Final Cut Pro. Now to test this, I took a timeline of a recent video and I copied it to both machines. It's a reasonably heavy timeline, color grading on every clip, multi-cam clips across the timeline, lots of plugs in, Gaussian blur, trackers, you name it. I'm going to export this timeline twice on both machines. The first time I'll run it in multi-pass, which is heavier and should take longer. My M3 Max MacBook Pro does this in seven minutes and 24 seconds. And while the Mac mini started off really fast, I mean, for a minute there, I thought it was gonna beat the MacBook Pro, but it didn't. In fact, it took the Mac mini two full minutes longer. Now, I was curious if I would get the same results on a shorter export. So for the second test, I ran it through a single pass option, and as expected, this was much faster, and it took the MacBook three minutes and 43 seconds to export the entire video. Running the same test on the Mac mini, and let's see what happens. Four minutes and 38 seconds, which is almost a full minute slower than the M3 Max MacBook Pro. Now, let's be clear. Both of these machines are performing really well, and you can ask yourself, how big of an impact a couple of minutes will have on your workday. It might matter to a specific set of users, but for me personally, a minute or two extra really isn't a big deal. Now, if the Mac mini would be experiencing lag and stutter in the timeline, that would be a problem. But as you can see, scrubbing clips both on the timeline and off 
is smooth as butter. And keep in mind that the MacBook Pro is three times as expensive as this Mac Mini. Now for the fun stuff, let's talk about gaming. I know this is not top of mind for most Mac users and Macs still aren't associated with playing heavy gaming titles. And that is in part down to the fact that there simply aren't that many AAA games available for the Macs yet. Mac computers just haven't historically been capable of running those types of games, so there's been little incentive for developers to focus on Macs. But with these new chips, Macs are changing, and gaming is becoming more and more of a reality. Now, as you would expect, AAA titles that have been tailored to the Mac and available in the App Store, like Lies of P, obviously run great on higher end Macs, and I'm happy to report that it runs beautifully on the M4 Pro Mac Mini as well. But I thought it would be way more interesting to see how this Mac Mini will run actual PC games. I built a very beefy RTX 4090 gaming PC setup not too long ago, and I have since been building a pretty respectable Steam library. But that PC is massive, and it's filled to the brim with coolers. Wouldn't it be kind of mind-blowing if I could run some of these titles on this tiny little box as well? Now, to make this happen, I installed a piece of software called Crossover24, which is essentially a tool that translates PC games into a Mac digestible format. After a bit of fiddling around initially, it was pretty straightforward to download Steam through the tool, and then all you have to do is download the games you want to play and see if they run. I picked a couple of popular titles, so let's have a look. By the way, while downloading and playing these games, you can barely even hear the fan on the Mac Mini. That's literally it. I have hard drives spinning harder than that. And it's completely cool to the touch. Absolutely cool. I thought maybe this housing here, the plastic would, you know, cause some thermal issues, but it's absolutely cool. Really, really good. First, I tried Black Myth Wukong, which is a game I'm currently playing on my PC. And to my big surprise, it actually runs. Now, obviously don't expect to max out any graphic settings on any of these games, but I found that most games run pretty decent on medium settings. The next game I tried is Cyberpunk 2077, a game known to be pretty graphics intensive. And while you're gonna have to settle for most settings on low, the game actually runs fine and it doesn't look bad either. Please forgive me for behaving a little bit like a psychopath shooting innocent bystanders. I promise it is for educational purposes only. And lastly, I wanted to check out The Witcher 3, still one of my favorite games of all times. And yes, it works. And yes, it runs really, really well. And guys, of course, you're not going to be doing any competitive gaming on a Mac Mini. Let's be real. But can we just take a second and appreciate the fact that this tiny little box can run current PC titles? That really gets me excited for the future. And I really hope to see Apple embracing gaming as a viable part of their strategy going forward. Now, there is one more thing I'm really excited about, specifically on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and that is the fact that this one has Thunderbolt 5 ports. And as I said earlier in the video, those are up to three times as fast as Thunderbolt 4 ports. On my MacBook Pro, I maxed out the storage to eight terabytes, simply because I want to be able to edit a couple of video projects at a time on this MacBook, and there just isn't an external SSD out there that comes even close to matching the speeds on these internal SSDs. But with the Thunderbolt 5 ports, that might no longer be the case. As of yet, there are not many Thunderbolt 5 accessories available, but I managed to find one of the first Thunderbolt 5 external SSDs, which is made by OWC, which happens to be a brand that I've been using and trusting for quite a few years now. They're not sponsoring this video. I paid for this thing with my own money and it was not cheap. The Envoy Ultra starts at $399 for the two terabyte version. And because I wanted the four terabyte version, I had to shell out 600 bucks. That's a lot of money for storage. But buying that same four terabytes of storage on the Mac mini will cost you twice as much. And that storage is non-removable and non-upgradable. So if this external SSD can reach speeds even close to the internal SSDs, I think it is well worth considering. Now, as we've seen earlier, the internal SSD speeds are nothing to sneeze at. So I'm really curious to see how this external Thunderbolt 5 SSD will deliver. And guys, holy crap, does it deliver. In terms of read speeds, it performs exactly the same as the internal SSD, and even the write speeds are consistently over the 5,000 megabyte per second mark, which is pretty darn close to the max internal SSD. I am really, really impressed with this, and editing straight off the drive should be an absolute breeze. Just for kicks, I wanted to test this drive on the MacBook Pro and the base model Mac Mini as well. And even though both of those machines have Thunderbolt 4 ports, which will obviously throttle the speeds, 
these are still the fastest speeds I have ever seen on an external SSD. So you could even make a case for picking one of these up for your Thunderbolt 4 machines. Again, not sponsored, but OWC if you're watching. So guys, there you have it. This M4 Pro Mac Mini is an absolute monster, and I can't believe Apple has been able to cram this much power in such a small box, which doesn't run hot and doesn't sound like a rocket ship under heavy load. I've been pretty critical of Apple these last couple of years, but they've really won me back with this little guy. Does it outperform my fully maxed out M3 Max MacBook Pro? No. But with that said, if I would unplug my MacBook and plug my entire setup into my M4 Pro Mac Mini, I will be able to do everything I need to do. And if I'm being honest, I would probably not notice a meaningful difference. And I will say this one last time, this machine is one third of the price of my MacBook Pro. Guys, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it one of these. It really does help. Subscribe to the channel. There'll be much more coverage on this little guy coming soon. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.